Okay, so there's been a bit of a disaster. Hello and welcome to the channel, where I turn video games into glass. To celebrate the re-reckoning of a game that came out eight years ago, I am making the Fate Weaver symbols from Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. I did have to modify the original image a bit. On the right is the original image, and on the left is the modified version. The reason I had to modify it was because the gaps on the original are too large for stained glass. Even filling the gaps with copper wire and solder, the solder would still melt out the sides. All I did was move the pieces closer together and close or eliminate the gaps. While there are still gaps, the larger ones are confined and won't melt out the sides. I could have made this middle gap out of glass, but I wanted to see if I could fill it with wire and solder and still look good. I used regular scissors to cut up to the paper pattern outline. Then I used three bladed scissors to cut out the actual pieces. The first problem I ran into was trying to color match the glass. In game, the Fate Weaver symbol appears as light blue and a deep bright purple. The light blue was easy enough to find, however, the deep bright purple was a little more challenging. This is called Deep Royal Purple Transparent. Because it is a deep purple, it is very difficult to tell it's purple without it being backlit by the sun or a bright light. This is the best I can do because of limitations with glass. I think it works pretty well though. This is the same purple as the Smash Bros glass I used, except it doesn't have the iridized part and the glass is a little bit thicker. I glue the pattern onto the pieces of glass using Elmer's glue. I use a ring saw to cut the complicated or oddly shaped pieces that will be difficult or impossible to do by hand. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning was one of my favorite games of the Xbox 360 generation. I've put several hundred hours into the base game and the DLCs. I love the story, the characters, all the quests, and how large the world was. It did have issues and bugs gameplay-wise, but the remastered title, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, is said to have fixed things and added quality of life improvements. And the fact that an expansion called Fate Sworn was also announced. The grinder is used to smooth out the cuts and refine the shape. I have a habit of leaving a little more gloss on the edges than I should. It's mostly because I want a little more wiggle room when grinding. While it takes longer to grind, it's better than over grinding. Once I am happy with how the pieces fit, I wash off the paper and glue with water and dish soap. Copper foil is wrapped around the glass and pressed down with burnishing tools to ensure a snug fit. I hand foil some pieces and use the table foiler for others. For complicated or odd shaped pieces, Hand foiling is the best method, since I don't have to fiddle with the table foiler. An X-Acto knife is used to cut the corners to be able to fold the foil onto the edges, though I can sometimes get away with just folding the edges over. Before I foil complicated or odd shapes, I put small pieces of foil on each side to prevent the glass from showing if the foil splits. This is called saddling. Foil will split if a curve is too sharp and leave exposed glass. So what counts as too sharp kind of depends. If I'm unsure if the foil will split, I saddle it anyway just to be on the safe side. An exacto knife is used to trim the saddled foil so it lines up with the regular foil. Even using the table foiler, I still messed up on foiling this piece. It wasn't correctly lined up with the wheel. I did go back and fix it though. I use push pins to make sure the pieces won't move before I can tack them together. So my plan first is to tack everything together and I will be filling all of the small gaps with copper wire and solder. And actually I was a little worried originally because in the original image all of the pieces are pretty much spread farther apart. So that's why I had to edit the original image to bring the pieces more together because the gaps of that size would not hold solder. So I think this will actually turn out okay. This gap right here is large but it'll be surrounded on all sides 
so the solder won't have anywhere to escape. It should just sit in there and play nice. The only part I'm really concerned about is this part. Turns out, I didn't need to worry because I put a hook there, so that small gap was filled with wire and solder. I used 6040 tin lead solder to stick the pieces together, applying flux before I solder. The flux allows the solder to bond to the copper, otherwise the solder won't stick. Once all the pieces are tacked, I remove the push pins and continue soldering. I cut copper wire and put it in the gaps, bending the wire to fit into the gaps as best I could. I layer the wire so it is the same height as the glass, and the solder has something to grab onto. The problem this made was that the solder keeps heat in better and longer than glass does, which meant that I could only solder a little bit at a time and had to wait for it to cool. If I didn't wait, the solder would heat up the glass to the point where the glass would have cracked. I used a flat part of the iron to melt the solder glob and the edge of the iron to solder the lines. I make hooks using copper wire and attach them to be able to hang the piece once it is finished. Hooks are soldered in a joint because the weight of the piece is on the joint and not the edge. For smaller, lighter pieces, you can get away with attaching hooks to the edge, but not heavier, larger pieces. Once everything cools down, I wash the finished project with water and dish soap, then dry it off. I use a patina made specifically for lead that will change the color from silver to black. While I was waxing the blue symbol, I noticed a problem that could have potentially ruined this. Okay, so there's been a bit of a disaster. The foil has completely torn away from the glass, and it came apart while I was waxing the piece. Now there are several things that could have caused this. One was that I didn't clean the edge of the glass enough, and so the adhesive couldn't stick. Second could be that I didn't burnish the foil down well enough. But what's more likely is that I overheated this entire area, which caused the adhesive to just melt and not stick to the glass anymore. It just seems like it's just this area. There are two ways to fix this. One is I clean off the patina, take apart this entire piece and that entire piece, take all the foil off, refoil it, resolder it, re patina, that's it. That is a lot of work. I'm not saying I won't do it, but another thing I can do, since it's just this small area, is to try and super glue this back down. I can pull it just enough, but not so that the foil rips. I can get super glue down in there and then press and hold it. I'm gonna let it dry out overnight and then I will fix it later. Again, this sucks. It's happened before. What? I know it's sad. And here I thought this piece was gonna be a problem because it's a hinge joint. There's nothing holding this on. Which I didn't exactly realize until I was halfway through soldering. What I probably should have done, this wouldn't have helped with the foil situation coming apart, but what I should have done was just place two little V-shaped wires in between here and here to stabilize it more. But again, that, that doesn't work when the foil itself is the problem. So yeah, I'm gonna let it dry overnight, and then I will... See if I get super glue in there and hope that that is enough. This one is still, look, well, it's still attached. I'm not, I'm not pulling very hard, but it definitely did not just come apart like this one did. This is the super glue I use. I carefully put super glue into the foil and wipe off the excess with a paper towel. I let it sit for 24 hours. It should be fine because there is no weight on that piece because I put the hook in a different spot. If you want to know more, I have a tutorial playlist where I explain each step in more detail. 
It was cloudy when I tried to show these off, which didn't affect the blue Fate Weaver symbol, but made trying to show the purple one impossible. I tried my best to put a bright light behind it, but it confused the phone camera, and this was the best I could get. As always, glass looks better in person than through a picture or video, especially dark glass. Despite this, and the problem with the blue Fate Weaver symbol, I am really happy with how these turned out. Relatively simple to make, and if I hadn't had the problem, it would have only taken me 10 hours from start to finish. I'm really excited to play the remaster when it comes out later this week. I want to see all the improvements that have been made, and I'm really excited more people will be able to play this great game. Like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you would like to see me make down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all through the next pain.